Welcome back, you man. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about child abuse. Straight in there today. Straight in there. No messing, no small talk, no nothing. She's in. I'm serious today. You are serious today. Why? Why so serious today? Because I was having a conversation with a family member who still disciplines, and I put this with air quotes, their kids by hitting them. Mm -hmm. And I was telling them that that creates emotional trauma. And as a child who was abused, I still today suffer from PTSD of some actions mm -hmm. because of that trauma. For example, if you try to hug me from the back, mm -hmm. I have an emotional reaction, a physical reaction. I, wow. I, I jerk, I don't like it. And I never understood what it is. And after years of trauma, I now understand it's like from the physical abuse of being hit on my back or mm -hmm. not seeing the hit coming and stuff like that. And that affects us, even if you think it doesn't. And this very archaic and hostile belief that, well, I was hit and I am fine mm -hmm. kind of mentality is the reason why people grow up with a lot of issues. Yeah. And it's just, it's crazy that at this day and age, for I me, mean, people still think it's okay mm -hmm. to lay hands on another being. Yeah. I don't care who that being is. I know that it's like your child there. We, we talked about children not being your property. So laying hands on another human being mm -hmm. is violent. It is not acceptable. Yeah, it's not discipline, right? Like I think a lot of us have probably been conditioned to that word. Well, it's just discipline. You know, if a child does something bad or somebody does something bad, I have the right to discipline them, and that's yeah. another air and, and discipline is not punishment. The minute you inflict pain on another human being, it stops being discipline, and it starts being punishment, mm -hmm. right? And that's the most important aspect that people don't understand. Actually, positive reinforcement is the best type of discipline there is. There is years and tons and tons of research right now mm -hmm. that shows you how old school discipline, i.e. punishment, is not a correct or corrective form of, of raising or disciplining a child. That a child actually better responds to positive reinforcements. Mm -hmm. That's why they stopped it with dogs, Gabby. Yeah. They used to do physical uh, negative reinforcement with dogs and they tell you, no, we use positive reinforcements. Yeah. There's a reason why they stopped disciplining dogs with violence. Yeah. And it shocks me that some human beings still think it's okay to discipline a child. In the same way. In the same way. And these are very sensitive years. We always talk about the age of zero to seven. Yeah. These are very sensitive years because the brain hasn't totally been formed yet. It's still, still developing. Still developing. So imagine at that age, you're already conditioning them that they are unworthy and they must be abused by pain. And the kid gets super confused because you're a parent figure and that's a representation of love. Mm -hmm. However, this love is causing them pain. So they start associating love to pain and they live their whole entire fucking life attracting men or women in their life that will give them pain because yeah. that's their understanding of pain. So the, the ramifications are massive. massive, they're ridiculous. Okay, so let's define abuse because there might be people think, yeah, but abuse is not the same as discipline. So this is why I kind of reference both. So what would you define as abuse? Abuse is when you inflict pain emotionally, spiritually, physically, mentally on another living being. That's abuse. And would you say it's fair to also say whether it's intentional or unintentional? Because people would say, oh, well, I didn't mean it, you know, I didn't mean to cause that pain. I'm just teaching them a lesson. And that's another air quotes for you. In both cases, yeah, that is abuse. Yeah. So the moment you inflict pain intentionally, not intentionally, consciously, unconsciously, that's abuse. Yeah. You know, this is a clear, clear definition. Discipline means you're teaching somebody by reinforcing a positive behavior, usually role modeling, mm -hmm. right? Once there's pain, it's over. Yeah, and we were talking before we started this episode about yeah. me, right? I was in Egypt, I have a younger brother. He's addicted to Fortnite. So for all you Fortnite lovers, I don't know how you do it anyway, but he pushed me to my limits. And I say that like I've done a lot of healing work. Yeah. I've done a lot of spirituality work. I just couldn't get through to him and 
I don't know what it was. Well, I do know what it was, right? Like I was disciplined as a child, physical abuse, not to the extreme, but definitely- Don't dumb it down. No, 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 but if I did something wrong, I was hit for it, right? Yeah. It's not dumbing it down, but it's just like, that was how it was. And see, even that's a form of conditioning yeah, saying yeah. that's how it was, right? Yeah. Anyways, the point is, he was just all the time sitting on that computer, sitting on that computer. You could take the internet out, you could take the lead out, all of those things, he still doesn't want to listen. And the irony is there's a kid on the other line who's, you can hear his mum also screaming at him. And I'm like, wow, it's not just me. And I just went from zero to a hundred like that. Mm -hmm. And I remember even one, at one point grabbing him and being like, why won't you listen? And I'm like, and I had to take a step and go, wow, this isn't you. Like, yeah. this is not who you are. Why are you doing this right now? And it really kind of messed me up. Yeah, that was your conditioning. Yeah. So you were programmed that that's how probably your mom would have reacted with you. Yeah. And just unconsciously when the situation got triggered, that came out because that's the only response to a situation like that that you know. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the issue. So the reason people say, well, I turned out fine is they don't know that there's other ways that they could, the situation could have been dealt with. Mm -hmm. And you can only do that through educating yourself. When you start educating yourself about how to deal with children, how to parent from a positive reinforcement way, you don't have any kids, but you see how you are with your dog, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you're, you're pretty, you've changed, you're, you're not beating up your dog. No. So, I mean, like you say, like we stopped doing bad things to animals. Why are we still doing bad things to, to humans? humans? Yeah. Because like, there is, like, we're both dog owners, right? And there's a lot of uproar in the dog community when you see people using prong collars. So yeah. those are the collars that dig into the ne dog's neck. And some people are still using these tactics, but the uproar is nuts. Imagine doing that now to a human being. Yeah. And, and just like the methods of abuse, you know, the physical abuse, and let's talk about it. It's in our region, the belt and the, the flip-flop. Um, what else? The hanger. Yeah. You know, these are all metal objects. And, and you see a lot of stuff online, right? Of people joking and we take these items and we say, oh, here comes the belt. And I've known myself to see those videos and laugh because yeah, yeah. So in my mind. So imagine your condition to see your trauma and laugh. and laugh about it. If that's not a trauma response, I don't know what the fuck is. Yeah. Because that is a trauma response. When you laugh uncomfortably about something and you're laughing about seeing abuse. So mm -hmm. you're, you've not just been gaslighted, you've been manipulated into believing that it's okay. You've normalized it, right? Yeah. yeah. So like you could, I could send that video to friends and be like, ha ha ha, this is so funny. And it's like, well, it's actually really not. Yeah. And a lot of comedians um, just harp about this. We were in a comedy show two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, this Lebanese guy is called Nimmer. He had like a two hour skit. Damn, I would say an hour 30 was about that. An hour 30. Sage is just coming into this. She right, loves to you. feature. Thank you, Sage. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so he made a, an hour and a half feature mm -hmm. about this, about how he was beat and how we can all unite about being beaten up. And I was like, oh my God, this is not even funny, right? Sitting and was it, was it weird being in an environment where obviously everybody else is laughing and you weren't? Or were you, were you laughing or not? I was like laughing a bit, but I wasn't really laughing. Yeah. It was like, you're forced in that situation to laugh because you're in a situation, and you're in a comedy it's, show. It's almost like an uncomfortable yeah. sense of like, I feel like I should If it laugh. was a 10 minute skit, I would have laughed. It just was a long, it was constantly being brought up, constantly yeah. being brought up. And I'm like, do we not have other material except that we have been beaten up by our parents and look how we grew up to become and then we go and do the same to future children or anybody else who are young in our lives so i did this uh, little song that i posted up on tiktok mm -hmm. about this i'm not singing the song before you get any ideas we will post the video of yeah, the song because it's video. very good but i feel like you should learn the lyrics to yeah this i song. should learn the lyrics and maybe song. next time you go to a family gathering <laughs> you can recite it to everybody live and then see what their reaction is yeah that's going to be fun and use props I use props for sure, for sure. And uh, what do you call? And I just posted it about six hours ago, and it's pretty much already hit like fourteen thousand views, two hundred comments, blah blah blah. And the comment sections, yo, 
there's people arguing for their fucking limitations over there. You know, it, I'm always interested to see when people start arguing for their limitations because mm -hmm. I know where that stems from. That's their fear, their conditioning. So it's very interesting to go. And yes, a lot of like that is called discipline or I'm grateful for my parents to hit me. And I'm just like, <gasps> so you say that and I feel like, oh, that sounds familiar to me. Yeah. I used to say those things. Yeah, fuck that shit, man. You know, like. Because you know, is... like I've said that Steve and I are looking at becoming parents yeah. next year, right? And there's always that one um, quote that resonates with me. It's like, don't have children until you've healed all of the yeah. trauma from your parents. Because our parents were doing the best they could, right? No, no, no. This is not blaming anything. We're yeah. just breaking a generational curse of that being acceptable. They knew what they did what they knew was best, mm -hmm. but we now know more and, and we, we know that we know better. And it's not even better, we know best right now and in the yeah. future, they'll know better than us. We keep evolving, mm -hmm. right? It, that It's just science. And that's the biggest point is we do need to keep evolving. You shouldn't just do what the previous generation did, right? Like there's so much out there that we learn and we grow and we change. Take that onus. Yeah, like as a kid that was abused, I don't think that <laughs> there's anything good that came out of it. Yeah. My character could have been developed way better. I had extreme trauma as, as a teenager from anxiety and just feeling not good enough and, you know, anger management issues and and that was just stored and pent in because I wasn't allowed to express myself because again, if you express yourself, that's disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of accumulated to something that it couldn't didn't need to. Can I ask? because I'll tell you my reaction. So have you asked your family and said to them, hey, remember when this shit used to go down? So, What's the reaction when so that comes up in conversation? I actually one time had to sit down with my family and I said to my sisters, irrespective of whether you think it was normal or not normal, I considered what, went, what we went through was abuse. Mm -hmm. I was abused and whether you choose to acknowledge if you were abused is your personal choice. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna leave it at that. And there was just like silence and no one, usually they would argue or debate and mm -hmm. I took their silence for acceptance yeah. because it's a hard thing to just say. Of course. I, I'm also, I remember I'm, a, I'm the youngest and also I'm a psychologist, so I, I I know this, so I'm very comfortable the way I articulate it, mm -hmm. but they don't necessarily have the words for it. So they kind of just breathed it in yeah. and everyone was acknowledged, allowed, it. acknowledged it and there was silence. My mom, I've had the chat with my mom as well, and my mom, of course, just thinks that's the way I should have done. There was nothing else I could have done. That's all, that was the correct way and I'll do it back again. And I, I, I don't blame her, that's her conditioning. Mm -hmm. And this is the good part about healing, is like, you're not gonna change another person's perspective, but you're going to see the other person's perspective and just understand that that's their own limitations. Mm -hmm. You can't ask a frog to, you know, fly like a bird. Like, they're just gonna be a frog, yeah. they can't. They just need to know how to jump. Yeah. So I don't have expectations that she understands this, however, my sisters who are more conscious and more evolved, you know, yes, I do expect them to understand. And I, I remember one of my sisters actually saying, she had a moment like you with her daughter. And she was like, that's when she saw her pattern and decided that she will never do it again. Yeah. So Good for her. Yeah, so to me, that's acknowledging that yeah. there was abuse and yeah. there was a change in behavior. I'm creating change, yes. It's, it's and another thing, another thing, a lot of people will gaslight you and tell you it didn't happen. It didn't happen the same way it did. It doesn't matter what they think. Yeah. You know what went on. Heal from it. Yeah. Don't hold, Don't be the victim. Heal from it and just fucking move on. I was gonna say, there's one thing that I quite always take with me is this, like, if you look at a story, right? There's your side, their side, and the truth. So you'll never always see the same page. So let's finish on that note. Yeah. What's the challenge, Hiba? The challenge is heal yourself, boo. There we go. Good. Done.